Hello, guys. It's a fantastic pleasure to be here. I don't know. I was thinking about this, what I should say, and uh, I actually studied singing once, but I'm so... I didn't want anyone to enjoy that, and you, I'm not going to sing here, so that's actually one thing. And I wrote poetry, but nobody just read it, so you wouldn't find that, actually. Maybe it wasn't good. So uh, what I'm going to do is gonna, I'm going to work you through uh, what an energy brand is. I'm going to show you a lot of slides and go fast through them. And, uh, but firstly, you talked about being pioneers, me being a pioneer, but you are actually. You are because you're sitting in this room and uh, it takes courage and a pioneering mind to travel to a remote island up somewhere in the north and to a conference on a subject that never, has never been talked about before. So you were the pioneers in my opinion actually. So uh, this guy wasn't really a pioneer though. He said that, uh, well you can read it off there. He said that the Americans have need of the telephone but we do not, we have plenty of messenger boys. Maybe in some respect, you know, in his way, he was right someplace. This guy wasn't really a pioneer either, but because he said that you wouldn't really, you couldn't really, the television, television wouldn't, you know, be there in a, in a short while. And if you think these are old examples, I'll show you a newer example. This guy, he laughed when he was talking about how the iPhone would never work. I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't pay a 500 US dollars for a tablet. That's what he said. So. The, there, you have a lot of examples of uh, industries that have, have gone wrong, actually. And in this one that we are in, we don't want to be the next one that, you know, some guy shows in 10 years' time that you did the wrong thing. Because things are changing. Of course, it's changed the regulations way back, but it's changing radically and much faster than I ever anticipated with technology. And you know this thing. This is a, this is a Tesla Powerwall. And that's the best brand. There's a lot of companies, good companies, making, uh, making batteries. But this is the best brand. This is the one you know, we will see. And, uh, and another thing that's changing stuff up is that we can make our own energy. And of course, you guys, you know all this. So, and I show you, uh, there's actually a kind of an Easter egg in my presentation. If you look at these companies, uh, bear them in mind a little bit. But these are all companies that have actually entered our space. You use the word energy space, it's the energy space. And, uh, and uh, you have the prosumer, the one who makes it, and you have the battery, you can store it. Ergo, the previous business model might be going out. So what I wanted to kind of say is you, you have to believe that you can actually brand a commodity. And when I started my PhD in Aston Business School in England, they weren't going to allow me to write a PhD on an, and how do you brand, and, uh, brand a commodity. You can't do that. It's just about price. Of course, we are sitting here, a lot of 250 people talking about it, so you can actually do it. And uh, what is this that you see here? This is salt. And so just to back a little bit up, uh, branding is a philosophy. You have to be honestly embrace the fact that you can brand something. You have to embrace the fact, like Nick was saying, that you have to, you have, to have a top-level commitment to it. Otherwise, it can't be done. So I'm going to flip through the next slide, and I'm going to show you a brand of salt. Can you think of any big brand that's been salted? Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> you can't think of any brand, a huge international brand, European at least. Malton, some people might say Malton, and uh, this is Malton for you. They tell us that their flakes are a little bit more sugary. They're a little bit more crystallized. But this is salt. They get away with it. We can too. We can brand a commodity. We can absolutely do it. And they make a story. Brands tell a story. They tell us a story. And we believe the story. We buy Malton salt, we go to the store, we, we buy it, we go home, and we treat our family because we're going to use the Malton salt this time. And its perception is reality. We believe it. Our brain is not lying to us. We believe it. So it's true. And, and a banana, of course. Think about a banana. And uh, maybe this banana. This is just a regular banana. Nothing particular. Another banana. This is just a regular banana. But I'm going to think of a banana brand. What brand comes to mind? Chiquita. I bet majority of you actually thought about Chiquita. But this is just the banana. At one point, in a boardroom someplace, they figured, let's make a brand. 
And I bet you, in that boardroom, there were people that were saying, that's stupid, really, because it's, about, it's a commodity, it's about price. But they did it, and imagine the value of this brand in your minds. Because 72% of you, give or take, thought about Chiquita. And that's brand value for you. Take vodka. Let's compare Prince Igor with Smirnov. You pay a premium for Smirnov, you pay three times the price maybe, you will not get more nicely drunk, you will not get less hungover, you want to be prettier, and the ladies want to be prettier to you for the guys. Nothing like that. It's a 40% spirit which makes you drunk. But you pay a premium because it's a brand. It's the very, very same thing. Why am I saying this? I'm not being, I'm not being condescending to this. I'm just saying you can do it too. You can brand a commodity like electricity and energy. All the empirical data shows it. So uh, why, do we need, why do we need this? Because the rules have changed and the industry has changed. And uh, it's changing uh, rapidly. And we are not the, uh, well, I'm going to quote actually you, because when we met the last time, then he, he said that he remembered the times within telecom when branding actually trumped engineering. So at one point in time, branding became more important. And for you engineering people out there, that might be a scary thought. But it's more than likely that it will actually happen, this, in, in this, this one too, because we are not just connecting a cable to a cable. We are not. We are connecting through the consumer's mind. We are creating a brand, and I, I made his head super big because you know, we are co connecting to his mind. That's where the brand resides, in our, our, our consumer's minds, and it's our responsibility to make him think of us. Add dimensions. Do so, put something that wasn't there in the, in the beginning. And sometimes I show a slide of Superman, and, I, and if you think about Superman, you just think about you know, the, the Superman, the, the character. You can, some people see him flying, some see his red cape, some see Clark Kent, some see Lewis Lane. But all of that stuff has been told to us, taught to us. If he's a brand, he's a good brand. We as an energy brand, we do the same thing. We teach people what we are, what they should think about, the, what they should think about us, and how they should think about us, how they should feel. It is more challenging with energy, but it's possible. And, uh, and we have to kind of uh, look at this as an, in, a, in a holistic way. It's not just a one-off thing. It's not just the next ad campaign. It's not just something that you'll do you know, haphazardly just to get the attention. It's something that you actually have to think about. It's not the Ferris wheel, wheel of fortune which you thro throw a dart and let's do one of these things. You have to do all of them, more, more or less. And if you look closely, uh, just to stop this for you, then you see advertising is just one of these things. For some people, branding is about advertising. It is, a little bit, but not that much. So uh, this is the energy brand, the way we see it at my company. But we also have to, uh, you can brand energy, but you have to be a little bit not mindful of how it's different from other kinds of uh, products. It's not just like branding a uh, soup or a cereal. So in my, in my academic background, I've done a lot of research throughout Europe uh, uh, how the energy consumer, consumer perceives energy in a different way. So what I figured, this is the, I'll, I won't dwell on it and I will do this quickly because we don't have a lot of time, but we have to be mindful of the special characteristics of electricity. It is different, I and mean, we can't treat it just like the other one. We have to, because there's a lot of preconceived ideas that the energy consumer has about it. And we just can't put a lipstick on a pig. I'm quoting you one more time, Nick, so this is not what we do. We clean the pig up, and kind of, well, it's not maybe a good analogy, but anyway. We try, and we, we have to change. We can't show the world that we are something that we're not. We have to change. That's the beginning of a good brand. So, and people think that we pollute, the, it's a political thing, it's a scam, it's the greenwashing, a lot of stuff that, like that. And, uh, well, let's put, uh, but, and be, so we have to be mindful of the what the participants think, actually, the, uh, the, the partic participants in my research. And, well, I'll just throw this up there. So, uh, the, 
what, what I found that the effects of the recent liberalization matters, the attitudes towards liberalization, and, uh, and the, uh, the commodity qualities and critical environmental impacts. We have to be mindful of this. And we go through all of this, and, and uh, well, actually, this is, I wasn't going to dwell, I, you know, this is, I could talk for the whole time about this. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll be happy to talk all of, to all of you individually and, and, and explain this, but uh, we do have to pay a special attention to the specific characters of electricity before we start to show flashy commercial and do it like with any other household products. It doesn't, well, you can do it, you can spend money, you can pour money into it, but you won't get the same results. This is kind of the, the uh, idea. So let's do a little bit of a phase shift here. So I'm going out on a limb here and I'm just gonna, because you're pioneers, so I'm gonna hope that you bear with me and forgive me from some of the strange, strange things that you might be seeing now. So the future competitor will not be your friendly next door utility neighbor. That's basi basically the, uh, the, what I want to tell you here. And uh, I'm gonna, this is a game, this is an arcade from 1978. Maybe you remember it and then let's put it up there. It's old, and uh, pictures it. Do you remember this? Does it make you feel good? Nostalgic? I'm doing this for a reason, actually. Because sometimes you talk about the energy space. You use the word energy space. And uh, so I thought space, obviously, because the, the competition will come from outer space. It will come from someplace else. It will not come from the next utility, from someone else. So let's stop it. I know you would have loved to see it, but I'm going to stop it anyway. And because now you're going to be, how is this going to end? Who will lose? So I've created the energy space invaders. I just added energy. And this is the Easter egg. Do you know these? Do you know these? Which is the first one there? Apple. Amos. Yeah. Yeah. They, they are companies. They are our future competitors. Or oh, not future, they are competing with us now. They, know, they have the weapons necessary. They know the customer. They have years and years of training to do, to compete with us. And if there's going to be a war on tomorrow, because we are talking about a war game, and let's say telecoms will compete for the minds of the smart home consumer. They will compete with you. Energy, we'll lose. So we have to be careful of that. So uh, just to wrap it a little bit up, I'm not going to put sound into this. So let's just take this all the way. Since I'm here and I'm starting doing this, let's just look, look at what happens here. So this is the energy space invaders. This is the version of the game that you just saw. And well, I could stand and I could uh, kind of, you know, say something smart or try to understand, try to explain why Tesla is there first. But we have to fight these guys. And if you don't think about them, we will lose. We will be the Kodaks of tomorrow. Kodak actually was, had developed the uh, technology for, for, do, for doing uh, digital cam cameras. They made more money off of films, so they shelved it. That's crazy. So let's not be the codex of, uh, how do you think this will end? I think maybe we'll just see what happens. Yeah, the consumer, will, well, that's a good point because the technology changes. We talk a lot about technology, but the consumer doesn't change. He wants the same thing. He wants to turn a light on. That's what he wants. But I know you're, we will win this actually, so you just, to take out the anticipation here. We have to kind of foresee where they're going. You know, we can do it in here, and we can do it also in energy. We can see where the markets are going, but we have to be looking for it. We have to do that. And so we have to, and in my, I am a passionate branding guy, energy branding guy. I believe in branding. I, I think it's a philosophy to me, it is. And to me, this is the 119th element for our success. Branding, energy branding. Thank you. Thank you.